I'm Russ Kickle, and today on American Reef, the Paletta 500 is actually in. So let me define actually in. Basically, today's video, what we're gonna do is the truck literally pulled into the driveway and we're gonna show what it takes to actually move a 500 gallon tank into its spot. And keep in mind that like most people think, well, we'll just throw a lot of people at the situation, right? Um, but that's not always gonna work, right? Like for example, in the previous video, what Mike did is he actually built that frame to see if the tank would fit through the path that it had to go. And so when you look at it, the idea of this video, again, is to give you an idea of what it takes to move a super large tank, because it's not as easy as it sounds. You know, and speaking of large tanks, Bulk Reef Supply has a series with the Worldwide Coral large tanks, right? They're 500 in the main room to even the one in the back to the one up front. And what happens is this series of videos I recommend highly for the new hobbyist because what they do is they put together a recipe of not only what Worldwide Corals and how they are successful, um, but basically Ryan will give his take and summary on the different kinds of tanks, right, and the recipes there. And again, I really believe for the new hobbyist, it is a great video series to watch, right? Another YouTube channel that again is a good video series to watch or a good channel to subscribe to would be the Premium Aquatics channel. Like lastly, for example, there was one of those paper roller kind of products that they showed the installation of it and how it was put together, etc. And when you look at that, you got a great feel for the quality of the product, its pros, its cons, um, how it worked and again I just thought it was a very useful uh, again very product demo kind of related video and there are a ton of them out there for again everyday products that you know a lot of us would find useful so again that's YouTube Bulk Reef Supply Channel and the Premium Aquatics Channel with that being said now what we're going to do is we're going to basically pick it up and say okay what do we actually need to move basically a large, huge 500 gallon aquarium. So besides a well thought out plan, one of the first and most important things you're gonna want are many sets of strong hands and backs. I mean, in Mike's case, for example, he had eight grown adult males. Um, and when we were moving that 500 gallon tank, at times, if there weren't other tools, those eight wouldn't even been enough. Right? The second thing, you know, at least one of these hydraulic scissor lift tables. Um, again, you know, First of all, this assumes that you'll have a finished smooth surface for those wheels to roll on right, to actually use this thing. And if not, then to me, the only other option that you have that's easily available are I've seen people take two inch PVC pipe and basically cut it down to the width of the tank and basically replace it under it. So what you do is you roll it on top of the tubing, basically replacing kind of back to the front as you move along that path. Uh, the third thing you'll need, basically these eight inch vacuum suction cups. These are basically the heavy duty glass or granite lifter suction cups. They go for about 50 bucks uh, if you want to rent, or excuse me, if you want to buy them. You, you know, I suggest renting them just because again, I'm not sure that there's many use cases for them after you move these tanks. And again, as you can see here, without of you know those um, suction cups, it would virtually be impossible for all those hands to kind of fit around and grab or even slide these aquariums. Another thing you'll need is some sheets of plywood. 
half inch or three quarters will work fine, as well as some insulation board. Again, as you'll see in the video, it's great to use it as a temporary resting place so you can kind of maneuver the tank into position, you know, without actually twisting it so it would loosen the seams, etc. And then lastly, basically a four wheel dolly so that you can kind of put it on to move it, you know, in and out as, as the need requires. And then from there, basically in Mike's case, that was pretty much everything that he needed. Now let's take a look how Mike's plan work out. We know that basically he had planned for that 90 degree turn um, to get into his basement and that worked flawlessly. Right? After placing the aquarium on a four wheeler dolly, it was relatively easy just to kind of move that tank into the actual aquarium room. So after the actual tank was in the room, the idea was to take it off the four-wheeler and then from there bring the stand into the room and then muscle the tank onto that stand. Well, as you can see from just kind of moving the stand in position, there wasn't a whole lot of room there, right? Meaning that ultimately all the people couldn't work their way around into the tank. So ultimately it would have been impossible to try to move that tank onto that stand with even less people. So they went back to the drawing board and in this particular case, what they did is they put the stand in place and then the idea was to put the aquarium onto that hydraulic scissor lift and then once it was on that scissor lift, they'll raise it up high enough so that it'd be relatively easy just to slide it off the stand. And that's what they did. Before actually placing the aquarium on the stand though, Mike wanted to mount or cut a hole so he could mount those stream threes on the floor of that aquarium. So basically he cut the hole out of the plywood and the insulation board, basically to allow for the magnets to hold those stream threes. And then after that, the aquarium just slid relatively easy onto the stand. So with the tank in place, the only thing left to do was actually install that exterior overflow. And what they did to do that was they took some clamps and two by fours and they created a ledge for the overflow to actually rest along the tank. After that, they put a bead of silicone all along the edge of the glass. Then they took it into the tank and after they actually hung it on that tank, what they did is they put another bead of silicone on the, we'll call it exterior, where the overflow actually met the glass tank itself. And then from there, they just let it set up for uh, 48 hours before taking the clamps off. So now Mike actually has that tank in place. And there are some things on um, that we'll say that took place that I didn't necessarily describe. One of them was time, right? The whole process basically took approximately three to four hours, right? So again, and that was with a relatively simple kind of move of the tank. Um, the other thing that we didn't kind of talk about in this video were um, when the, the tank builders actually showed up. Right, and they actually saw how and where the tank was going. Um, there was kind of that deer in the headlights look, right? That like look that was, ah, that's not exactly how we thought this was going to go, right? And what that meant was basically he said it was a straight shot in from the driveway to the fish tank room or to the fish room. And in reality, what they thought it was a straight, literally no steps right in a straight path but what Mike meant was it was 
all one level, no steps to go down. And so that like 90 degree turn, the size of the fish tank, that kind of caused a little bit of pause at the beginning. So they had to spend probably 45 minutes to an hour just kind of replanning how they were going to do things. Right? So again, another words of advice kind of thing or lessons learned from here is like in this particular case, the tank builder was from Florida and Mike's in Pennsylvania. So, you know, that distance will say um, that was the first time they actually met or actually kind of uh, seen kind of the, the situation. So I'd say that if you are going to, again, have a custom tank and it's being built, make sure if they can't get on site that you take your video camera and literally walk through the path right of how that tank you envision that tank going and basically send that to the to the builder itself because that'll help greatly in kind of reducing some of those unplanned um, another thing that is unplanned that kind of leads the way for the next show is once Mike got this tank in the room um, you know he's he had a big or has a big project in getting everything from his existing tank over to his new tank. But then he wants to eliminate the old tank and then replace it with a large kind of, we'll say, filtration system where the existing tank is setting up. And when you look at it, getting that existing tank out of there is an issue, meaning you kind of assume that that tank could come out, but with everything in there, uh, again, it, there's issues trying to get that out. And so Mike, as usual, came up with a creative way of basically getting that tank out and then building a temporary filtration system, allowing most of that kind of, uh, we'll say, next step to take place. And that's what we'll, we'll show on the next video. And until then, what I'll do is I'll give you a little preview as to kind of, you know, what the tank looks like in that temporary state. And you'll see what's coming up on the next video. And remember, if you're looking for what I consider one of the best fish foods on the planet, check out AmericanReefHPD.com. Or you can go to AmericanReef.com, click the store button, and you can get it there. Again, my name is Russ Kickle. Thanks for watching this episode of American Reef. And stay tuned for more of this. Music